So excellent academic writing utilizes and includes citations, evidence, sources. These are all things that we need to include within our academic writing in order to firstly give context, explain what's at stake, but also to present your your findings and your review uh, succinctly. If you're writing a dissertation or you're writing a thesis, sources and evidence is absolutely fundamental in order to support your thoughts, in order to support sort of what's happened before, what research has been done in the past, and what you are sort of building upon. Now, although we at university are told to include sources and we are given, you know, sources to include, a lot of the time, in fact, most of the time, we're not actually told Told how to include those sources within your writing. So do you just pluck out some quotes and reference them? No. Do you just copy lines and lines from a research paper? No. There are eight quite intricate ways that you can include sources and evidence within your writing in order to support and strengthen your own writing. And these are all slightly different, but the, the purpose is to sort of support what you're saying and show that you've read around your subject and you understand the context of what you are you know, looking into. Okay, so the first way that you include sources is to establish what's at stake. So establishing what's at stake means that you're giving context as to what's happened in your research area. This is a source that's presenting a question, it's presenting a problem, it's presenting a question and showing why and what you're interested in and what's going to be discussed within this paper. So this is usually in the beginning of your dissertation or your review, you would establish what's at stake right at the start to introduce your reader and your audience to your topic. And some of the ways that you would do this are by saying that much of the current literature on X pays particular attention to something so you're going into a bit more detail or something like the existing literature on X is extensive and focuses particularly on this so again you're giving that background information or even something like a considerable amount of literature has been published on X and then going into more detail these studies and you're going into a bit more detail there. So this is just sort of introducing, it's kind of giving that information and presenting your audience with information that they should know before they read on. The second way is by providing context. Now, initially we talked about what's at stake and that's just a bit more general. Now you're going into more detail. So you're providing that detail and this is where you're really going to bring in that information that you understand and that information that you want to pass on to your audience. So providing context means that you're orientating your reader and you're providing that frame to show them what the kind of limits of your understanding and the understanding that you want them to know is to be able to read onto in within your research paper. So some of the ways that you might do that is by saying X appears to be positive related to both Y and Z. So you're providing that context and you're of course referencing at the end or even something like X is one of the most intense reactions following CHD. So that's um, CHD is a disease or something like X is significantly reduced during the first months of and you go into more detail and again you're referencing here as well. So all of these ways of providing context is, is given that information that you need for the reader to be able to understand what it is that you want to present in this paper and going into a bit more depth to show relationships and to show a background of your topic. So another way that you might want to add sources is to provide support. Now somewhere within your dissertation and your writing, at some point a bit later on, so after the initial introduction, you want to provide a point. So what is the point that you are trying to make, right? What is the hypothesis? What is the point? What is your discussion that you are trying to develop within this research paper? So then you need to use sources to support what you are saying, right? As an academic writer, need to use sources to support to and also the opposite as well to counter but definitely to support your discussion and what this does is it validates because by showing that other published papers other published authors renowned published authors are saying something similar it validates your discussion it validates your argument so these ideas that you use within this kind of topic is uh, they should be parallel to your own so they should be supporting what it is that you're saying so some ways that you might want to say that are by saying in her review of um, whatever or something like in her analysis or in her introduction in her interesting analysis then you say Smith so this is an example Smith 2020 2012 sorry identifies five characteristics of so you're, you're supporting what it is that you're saying or you can say something like similarly someone found that X 
in the same vein this view is supported by and you're giving a source now the way to reference and this is how you would harvard reference and the others are quite similar as well the way to reference is by giving just the surname of the first author and then the dates if there are more than two or three authors you can use et al but generally you just use a first name and then um, if there's one author use a first name the date and then you can go into more depth like that you don't have to give the title you don't have to give any more detail than that within your discussion point it's just throwing it in and it goes to just to show some support to your point so those words like similarly in support of likewise like all of these words are there to support your discussion and they are to be used when adding sources in this way okay another way that you can add sources is by discussing keywords and introducing keywords so don't forget that your reader may not know as much depth into your topic as you or you might want to bring in keywords that are something slightly different to what you've discussed so far but it is relevant and is parallel to what it is that you're speaking about or it might be a term that's bringing in like a new light to your topic so it's something slightly different but it is important for you to kind of first introduce it and define it in a way that your reader will understand and kind of links into your topic too so some ways that you might want to do this is by saying to date several studies have investigated and you hear you introduce something new or a number of studies have begun to examine and again you're going to add a new concept here various studies have assessed the efficacy of and again you might want to add a new a new sort of discussion point here and then lastly this is quite a nice one researchers attempted to evaluate the impact of and so you will say impact of and then it'll be something slightly different to what you've mentioned so far so these are always and there's more than this <laughs> these are always to support what it is that you've said but also introduce a new topic now this is the fun one the fifth one is providing a counter argument so there is no good academic writing without a counter argument because you know nothing is just one sided right everything has a counter argument so there are some ways to do this and it's really important that as an academic as a writer you are not just speaking about those that support you but also those that are you know speaking slightly different have a slightly different opinion slightly different view if it's something that's more quantitative have shown different results what is it like what have they done what are they showing and why is it different and you need to be able to justify that and validate that and discuss that to have strong academic writing so this could also be a different interpretation as well so of the same of a theory that you've discussed there might be a slightly different interpretation and this is some ways that you can incorporate that within your work so you could say so here Zhao 2002 notes that and then you've given your first statement right that's your first statement then you're going to say however Jennings 2010 study of Y found no link between XYZ so you initially said Zhao found this and that's your first statement however Jennings found there was no link and you might want to expand on that slightly not in too much depth just like another sentence to say this could be because the methods were different this could be because the cell types were different this could be because the conditions were different like whatever you think why that could be different add that in that shows original thought that shows critical discussion that shows critical evaluation analysis and these are all comments that by adding a sentence here and there you're kind of reaching those top marks if you're doing a dissertation by adding that like like your own independent thought by why you think that Zhao found this and Jennings didn't find that that shows original thought and it shows a discussion point and that's you using sources to I guess expand your writing another way of doing it is by saying Smith 2013 found that X accounted for 30% of Y so you've shown a relationship you've then said other researchers however who have looked at X have found that this thing Jones for example found this so here they've used two or three sources so you've said Smith found this thing you've given detail you've said 30% so you don't actually have to go into that much depth you can very like smartly add in that detail so 30% you've added that in then you've said however other researchers have found something slightly different and then you can add to it so you can say Jones found this and it was different so and so found this and it was different so here you can add two or three sources so this is the initial source then you've got two or three sources that are actually quite different to the one that you it's a counter argument to the one that you initially mentioned so all of this is really important in kind of having that counter argument and it's all showing that you are intricately able to bring together your reading because don't forget everything we've spoken about today is to do with your reading and you're able to kind of 
bring it together to make a story and make it make sense. All right, so number six is to advance your argument. So you've said, Joan said this, this person said that, but you need to go into more depth. When writing academically, it's not enough to just give surface level information. You might wanna go into a bit more depth to one or two points or you know to do with your topic whichever whatever you think is most powerful to be able to kind of expand a little bit you do need to go into a bit more depth so adding a source here would really help to expand that initial like that main claim that you're making that is what you want to go into depth with here so a one a way that you could do that is by saying smith argues that and you're straight away going in with argues that and you give some discussion here and similarly jones asserts that so this person argues that this is what it's like but also Jones asserts that so you're really going into like more depth and you're developing your argument so it shouldn't be the same point you're initially giving a point then you're giving a point that's like developed on the second on that first point right so don't forget you're telling a story here another way you can say it is Smith presents an account of something whilst Jones presents a different account Smith focuses on X and Jones is more concerned with concerned with why. So these are all developing your arguments. So developing from the point we mentioned earlier about counter arguments, and then now you're developing it. So you're going to a bit more depth. Maybe you will talk about the method. Maybe you'll talk about the like the conditions of their experiment, or, or their like collect the way of data collection, data analysis, the stats, whatever it is. You want to go into a little bit more depth here when including this kind of thing in your sources. Okay, so this is where a top like really top marks come from, and this is complicating your argument so really complicating it making it a bit difficult for yourself but showing that you have critical analytical skills right so you're going to present a source that actually poses a problem to your theory to your analysis to your discussion to your 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 main kind of concept this source is going to cause a problem and actually problems are a good thing because they allow you to discuss they allow you to expand they allow you to justify your stance now by adding a source like this that contends with what you're saying, you actually need to respond in a way that shows that you have a really strong understanding of your topic. Your response to this becomes quite a significant part of your discussion. So this actually would be more part of your discussion slash conclusion and not the introduction, not the results. This is very much discussion sections. So some ways that you might want to add this in, for example, is by saying some writers um, like Smith have attempted to draw fine distinctions between X and Z, so you've said that this is the case. However, others question the usefulness of it. So you might have mentioned a method, and you're saying others have questioned how useful it is. So they're completely dismissing the importance of this particular method or this particular result. So now you need to go back and say, actually, the reason why it is important is because X, Y, and Z. So this is where your original thought comes in. Another way of saying it is, some authors have mainly been interested in questions concerning X and Y, and others have, have highlighted the relevance of X, Y, Z. Much of the available literature on X deals with the question of, but Smith is much more concerned with XYZ. So it's just really about showing that you understand the academic scene is the key thing. Like when your academic tutor, your supervisor, your, your examiners are looking at your work, they're trying to understand that you firstly have an idea of your discussion, your, your the theory behind your work, the context, but then also the arguments. What's out there? What else is out there? Who else is talking about this? Who else is speaking about this? Why are they speaking about this? What are they speaking about? And how are you countering what they're speaking about? It's a lot of like discussion essentially and justification. Okay, and the last way, and this is like my favorite way, is, <laughs> is concluding a point or concluding a paragraph or concluding a particular stance. Essentially, when you're writing your literature, you want to summarize a point of view. So you've given the introduction, you've given the context, you've then given an argument, you've given a discussion point, and then now you want to say, right, okay, but overall, this is what we believe, and this is why I'm you know, going to discuss in this paper. So this is, you know, this is also an opportunity for you to add a source over here. So the way you can do that is by saying something like, the evidence presented in this section suggests that the studies presented thus far provide evidence that taken together, this study support the notion that overall there seems to be some evidence to indicate that. That one would be a bit more um, of a question one. So if you're saying there is some evidence to indicate, it shows that they're like you're kind of touching upon that bit, right? Academic writing is, is tricky. When thinking about the language you want to use, you need to think about what do you want to portray to your reader? right so if what you're discussing is something that is still like question mark question mark it's still not 100 percent it's still a discussion point it's still like uncertain then you can use words like indicate suggest 
But if what you're showing is like factual, it's true, like it's it's been found, there's evidence for it, then that kind of language is like suggestory and it's not language that you should be using. Together, these studies provide important insights into all of these studies reviewed here support the hypothesis that. Okay, so all of this kind of language, like they all have a slightly different message and they all give a slightly different like understanding, but ultimately they are summarizing your sources. And I think people generally, like when I read assignments, I read essays, I find that this is like not very well done. Like you'll give your sources, you'll give your background information, you'll discuss them, but you'll never really like summarize that section, especially if it's like within an essay, within dissertation. It's just like, there's just a jump to the next paragraph. Sources are very rarely summarized and I find it to result in quite jumpy text. So you're going from like one idea to the next idea to the next idea and there isn't really like, like you're not summing it up, you're not closing that kind of paragraph, that book. So it's really important to be able to do that, especially when you're using sources. But yeah, I hope you found this video interesting. It was very fun to film and I think it was interesting to show you exactly how to add sources. I definitely see this as a, a massive weakness when it comes to essay writing and dissertation writing, literature review writing, discussion writing, thesis writing, all of that, adding quotations and adding sources is probably the most poor, poor, poorly like done bit of the academic writing. So yeah, hopefully you found this helpful. And if you like this video, don't forget to press the subscribe button and the thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.